Good morning and welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church Heath. We are so glad that you're here. Today is what we call Palm Sunday, and it marks the very beginning of a week, a week that we call Holy Week, that um, celebrates all of the stuff that goes on um, with Jesus in his final week of life. And to fully get it, to even try to get a glimpse of the fullness of what God did through Jesus Christ with the cross, I encourage you to come back on Thursday evening. Thursday evening, we're going to celebrate um, Monday Thursday, which is like mandate Thursday. And this is where Jesus um, celebrated his final meal with his friends, with his disciples, and he talked to them all about um, what they are commanded to do, which is to love one another. And so this Thursday evening, we'll celebrate that final meal with our own dinner work Worship in the fellowship hall, and we encourage you to come to that at seven o'clock on Thursday. And then on Friday, we come again here and we sit with a little bit more contemplative reflection and meditation as we come into the sanctuary and we, we recognize all of the, um, the burdens and the sin that Jesus takes with him on the cross. And then Saturday, we wait and we all wait for God who takes our sin sick stuff and does something amazing and mystical and wonderful with it, with Jesus' death, and we sit somberly with that on Saturday, and we come back here with the fullness of our salvation and Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. And so this is the beginning of that Holy Week where we celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus and his disciples into Jerusalem, and I hope that you will then center your hearts and minds as we really just take in all of the music, all of the fanfare, and all of the prayer that is Palm Sunday. Will you please rise as you are able for our call to worship. We raise our voices and wave with joyful hope the palms of deliverance of God's people. Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Our hearts are filled with expectation as we welcome the coming king. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We receive into the crowded streets of our lives the one who is Savior, not only of us, but of all of the earth. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
love divine was sent by God to earth in human form. Today we gather to celebrate the life of Jesus, to reflect on the event that led to his crucifixion, and to remember his ultimate living sacrifice. The final week of his life began in triumph with a great celebration as he rode into Jerusalem with his many followers to observe Passover. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. And the children can come back to me, me. Oh, sorry about that. So all the children, <laughs> all the children go back to where Pastor Sandy is. Go on, go ahead. Come on, children. Come in the very back.
As everybody has a seat, we appreciate you participating in that brief palm parade. It feels strange and uncomfortable because it's something we don't really do very much, but it's really nice when you can see people just confidently, joyously waving those palms. Hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, put their cloaks on them, and sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Amen. I used to have a very spectator-limited understanding of a parade. When I was a child, I would watch the people and the cars go by in maybe a, um, a fall homecoming parade or the 4th of July summer parade, and they would be waving from cars. I would wave back at them. I would gawk at how people were so lucky to be in the parade. With COVID, something unusual happened to our view of parades. It expanded. It expanded. In the depths of our pandemic, all of our gatherings were limited. Our birthday parties were canceled. Graduation parties were canceled. And in all of that, what did we do in our predicament? We brought back the parade. Do you remember those? In the absence of getting together in those traditional celebrations, maybe it's no longer just a baby shower, but we're, we're chunking diapers from a window onto a lawn through our parade, right? To just sh- really quite literally shower them with diapers and all kinds of baby gifts. Or maybe it was a way to introduce students to their new teachers or um, even to pass out candy for trick-or-treaters. It would be a parade. And the best part of all with this parade is that anyone could join the parade, because it was the more the merrier. It made it even better if you joined into this parade of cars and this happiness and joy, because a parade with three cars really can be quite sad. And a season so steeped with um, illness and death and uncertainty that we had, especially the unknown, we discovered the simple parade was a creative way to bring back our moods and uncovering hope that would help us move forward. It was those COVID car parade images that kept coming to my mind when I thought of our palm parade and the palm parade that Jesus had heading into Jerusalem with all of the people. All of that mixture of emotions that was going on. We knew it was important to shout with joy. They knew it was important to shout with joy. Even if that joy was also laced with fear of what could happen in the next week, we had that exact same feeling with our car parades. For a brief moment, we could just focus on the hope and the joy of a, of a celebratory moment. I imagine that's what a group of people was feeling too when they were initiating um, Jesus in this, this parade of his own. What we call a parade today doesn't exactly remember, re- resemble the parades of ancient times. It doesn't have the, the political overtones to it. It's less grandiose in our parades. And so it's simply too difficult for our modern minds to see the sharp contrast between what was typical for a Roman parade and what Jesus did on the cult. 
I think sometimes context matters as how Jerusalem came to be Roman in the first place, how they even got into the situation. Rome had successfully conquered nations and had been acquiring lands for quite some time. They captured Jerusalem in in 63 BCE. So this is a good generation or so before Jesus is even born. You had Herod the Great who was appointed king of Jerusalem, of that land, by the Roman Senate. And during his 30-year reign, the city of Jerusalem, it grew in wealth. It grew in opulence and buildings. Herod expanded the city limits beyond the walls of the temple that the Jews had built. He built a new royal um, palace. He erected an amphitheater. He made, in general, he made Jerusalem such a spectacular spectacular and new Roman metropolis that by the time Jesus is coming around in his adult ministry, you've got U.S. news and reports saying that Jerusalem is the hottest city to live in. That is like the number one fastest growing city. Everyone wanted to be in Jerusalem. At the same time, though, the Jewish people They were frustrated because this was their holy city. This is the most divine place of God to be and for us to be with God. It was holy, it was spiritual, and all of that holiness is being desecrated by the Romans. But they didn't really know how to assert their authority over the Romans. They didn't have that kind of power that the Romans had. They needed to wait, wait patiently for their long-awaited Messiah They needed their own king. They needed a king who was going to be appointed by God, who was going to come here and reclaim what's rightfully theirs. So you've got this tension, and you've got this potential for rebellion by the Jewish people that is always just under the surface, that always exists. And now it's Passover. It's the holiest time, and all these Jewish people are making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem, to the holiest place. And so the Roman authorities, they know that this Jewish Jewish festival is going to quadruple the size of Jerusalem. They understand and know that 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 population is going to swell at least four times from around 50,000 people to 200,000 people. And that is why the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, he is called up for this special assignment to come to Jerusalem from his cozy coastal home in the west. Pilate is going to be in charge of monitoring and just watching what happens with these Jewish people who come from their annual pilgrimage. He's going to be there to really make sure that Rome is protected and that Rome continues to seize that, have that land that it seized in the first place. That there's not going to be an uprising of any kind that happens in Jerusalem during Passover. This is why biblical scholars contend that Jesus' procession into Jerusalem may not have been the only parade that day. As Roman governor assigned authority over a Jewish people and Jewish land, Pontius Pilate would have arrived from the west with this this legion of of horses that are tricked out and all in their best dress and their soldiers marching in great formation. His horses would have been adorned with the, the plates of metal and the swags of fabric, of rich fabric, and his soldiers' formations would have been really tight and in line, and it would have been massive parade of people. And when all was ready for maximum demonstration of shock and awe, he would signal his trumpeters and the drummers to strike up a familiar song. And this was to encourage people to come out of their houses, the people upon, in the city upon hearing that, that drum beat and the music from the trumpets would come out to see what it was going on. They would pour out of their homes to sing their obligatory praises of the person the parade was honoring. The governor's presence and all of his his imperial majesty, it's to remind the Jewish people one thing. This is Rome, and we own it. This is our land. We are Rome, and we're going to continue to weigh down the citizens with our agenda. And it would be Rome who would be supervising the Passover festivals of the Jewish people. Rome is here to protect you and to make sure you do what you're supposed to do. And while all of this is going on with Pontius Pilate from the west, across town on a hillside coated with olive trees, Jesus enacts a mockery of kingship. He is completely unarmed. He has little to no capital, no political backing whatsoever. And he's going to ride into town on a colt and a donkey with cloaks 
covered over them. If Jesus wanted to do it right, if he really wanted this glorious entrance into Jerusalem, this triumph of Jerusalem that we often have as the title of this section in the Gospel of Matthew, if he really wanted to do this, I mean, and announce that this is the home turf of the, turf of the Jews, if he wanted to declare himself sovereign of the entire world, he certainly would have done it differently, at least on a full-grown horse. The Messiah's entry into Jerusalem warps the typical patterns of power and of lordship. It is something different. Now there's this growing mob of people crowding around Jesus and they're throwing down their cloaks, throwing down palms and branches of trees that they've cut down to do their own celebration of a parade. His disciples are there, of course, but they're certainly not in any kind of standard formation like Pontius Pilate's soldiers are, right? Others have been flocking to Jesus, trailing behind because they watched him heal a blind, a blind man, Bartimaeus, and they were like, let's go see what this is all about. Other people just see the commotion and out of morbid curiosity, they follow the disciples who took the colt and the donkey. And then you've got some who are starting to say, wait a second, this feels a little bit like deja vu. I'm remembering something from our scripture. I'm re remembering something from Zechariah 9.9 in particular, where they remember that a Messiah is going to ride into Jerusalem on a colt or a donkey. So seeing Jesus now confirms the rumors that they had heard. Jesus is the Messiah. This is our moment. This gives them hope that in this moment they have this, this chance to revolt against the most powerful people. And that is going to begin now with this parade. It's going to be, begin this week with Passover. Here he is on a colt, and he is the Jewish hope whereby God would send an anointed king to defeat God's enemies and restore God's people, even restore all of creation. This is our hope, our hope for a state of everlasting peace. So, of course, people are throwing down their, their leafy branches and their cloaks and their coats. They're, they're putting them all on the ground, and with such excitement and anticipation, the shouts began, Hosanna to the son of David! Hosanna, blessed in the highest! Hosanna! He who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. As Jesus makes his way into Jerusalem, the crowd is now joined into this parade and it's building this momentum and that Hosanna of blessed are you, save us, save us. That's what Hosanna means, save us. Blessed are you is in this kind of alleluia type chorus of worship and praise. And it's in this moment carrying the weight of oppression that they begin to experience salvation. They began to see that salvation is real. It is possible. It is within their grasp. There are two very different parades happening, two processions into Jerusalem, but with two opposing purposes. And this is the background, says scholars Borg and Crossan. This is a background in which they, they and we need to frame that triumphal entry into G Jesus, into Jerusalem, that as as Pilate clanged and clashed his way from the east or from the west, and he's making his entrance known, he's making sure people know that Rome is in charge, that Jesus' procession looks a little different. Pilate's is, is one of strength and is stately, and it's representing all kinds of power. And Jesus is, well, his procession is of the powerless, of the ridiculous, of the simply put, the people who have been oppressed and the people who are the most vulnerable. And given the situation at hand, the growing tension in the city, I can actually empathize with the well-intended religious leaders, the, the pleas of the Pharisees to get Jesus' followers to quiet down. This is not the time. We do not have the power to do something. Do you see the difference in the parades? This is not the time. The city that both Jesus Christ and Pontius Pilate enter, this was a city that was incredibly divided, and that tension was mounting, especially as they're getting closer to this holy time. The holiest of cities had become the center of wealth and power, but it had also become the place where the most poor and the most vulnerable are the most marginalized, and they feel the most demoralized than they ever had before. And now the city is being claimed by two kings. I have no idea 
whether anyone in the crowd on that first Palm Sunday understood really what Jesus was doing. But I don't think it would have been an exaggeration to say that Jesus' political joke hastened his crucifixion. He caught the attention of the Roman Empire, and not in a great way. He caught the attention of those who wanted just to try to keep things exactly as they were, the status quo. So why then have the parade? Why would Jesus take such a risk with his life? The story, the story is a reminder of political challenge of Jesus' ministry. Through his entire political, his entire ministry, he was fighting political forces. He was doing everything he could to disrupt the status quo. And the story is just the beginning of what change is really going to happen. It's the culmination of his ministry. A change is happening through him by God. In the place of military conquest, Jesus shows a different way. In the place of military conquest, Jesus offers a ministry of peace. Instead of oppressive powers that bind us, that keep us tied up, and shackled, Jesus' ministry offers us salvation, where the shackles fall off. This parade of peace into an occupied city was a declaration of the coming of God's kingdom. And as the disciples and the crowd begin to recognize the Messiah in their midst, so do we. Jesus helps us re-image, reimagine the concept of kingship in accordance with God's ultimate desire for humanity. Just imagine, it is here, it has begun, it begins again each year as we remember and as we celebrate what it is God is continuing to work on in our lives through Jesus Christ with the help of the Holy Spirit and all of us, the church. We need a parade to recognize what Jesus the King looks like. Two kingdoms, two symbolic journeys into Jerusalem. Author Diana Butler Bass reminds us that we live in a world with two processions. We are constantly watching two parades happen in our world. We inhabit a history that is just littered with lots of Caesars, establishing empires of their own, asserting their power, their economic exploitation, all while claiming God's blessing to be challenged by those oppressed and those who offer alternative proclamations of peace and justice. So there's peace and justice competing against the powers that be and that want to oppress. This is the way of worldly power, and then this is the way that is different. This is the way of people, and this is the way of God. Thus, we have a conflict that begins today, and that is this Holy Week. It's the collision of the divine and the humanity, the earthly. It's the divine and the earthly coming together, the clash of righteousness and faithful against the secular, and the paradox of death that somehow, somehow brings eternal life. What a paradox. Palm Sunday... It's a day when everybody is invited to join in on the parade. Everyone gets to participate. We are all invited to wave our palm branches, to sing out loud, and to choose. Where do you find yourself standing? Where do we find ourselves standing as a church? Which parade are we participating in? Which one do we want to join? Which ruler will free us? from the power of evil and lighten our load by taking on our burdens? Caesar or Jesus? We thank God for our Holy Week that invites us to reflect upon these very questions. Let us pray. God, we are incredibly grateful for the ways that you bring us together, the ways that you teach us through your word, through your example, through your son, Jesus Christ. We recognize that we have this clash between the divine and the earthly. And sometimes, God, we struggle. We want to be part of both worlds. Help us this week to really reflect on you and what you have done through your son, Jesus Christ, so that we can join in this parade of peace and justice so that we can help bring about your kingdom here on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
halfway down the Mount of Olives where Jesus had prayed and had gathered and started to do this parade, it's kind of this, this terrain that goes, dips down really low and goes back up again into Jerusalem. And so from the Mount of Olives there, you can look right across just at eye level into Jerusalem but there is a small chapel. It's a chapel that's in the shape of a teardrop with a window that has a really gorgeous view of Jerusalem. And its name means Jesus weeps. And this is the traditional location where Jesus wept over the city. Pilgrims gathered there to share bread and wine as they looked out across towards Jerusalem. They still do this to this day. And as the view of the city, it's a city that is still divided with multiple religions fighting for that, that ground, multiple people clashing together who have differences of opinion, some who want to assert power over another. And so it's a great place to go. It's a great place to remember that every time we go to break bread, we pray for all of those people, all of these people to come together as one. It is a moment to recall the great cost of reconciliation as God sent Jesus into a world to bring back everybody into God's powerful and loving embrace. It's a moment to realize that every one of us needs salvation from this moment forward and that God goes before us to help make that possible. So wait, may we now begin with our part and our participation in that salvation by confessing our sins. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for you while you were yet sinners, and that proves our, God's love for us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join in their unending and ending hymn saying, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you and holy are you. Blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering and his death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. The day for the feast of unleavened bread came, during which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare a Passover for us to eat. After taking their place at the table, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks to God, and he broke it. He shared it with all of his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. He also took the cup and he gave God thanks. He shared it with his disciples and said, this is my cup of the new covenant poured out for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Oh. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one into ministry of the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we confess that when we started this journey, it seemed like a fun idea. Walk the road with Jesus, we thought. But the journey has caused us to experience difficult times when our spirits have been challenged. And now we come to the time when we are invited into the holy city. As we proceed, may you bless us with discomfort. Discomfort at easy answers and half-truths and superficial relationships so that we may live deep within our hearts. May you bless us with tears, tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, and war, and so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may you bless us with foolishness, enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world, so that we can do with others and what others have claimed cannot be done. Hear our community prayers this morning. Help us answer the prayers of others. And having the mind of Christ, may we be ready to place our cloaks in the path of a colt and sing out, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Even when we are cautious or embarrassed to sing too loud, Jesus, remind us that even the stones sing out. What good news to know that we usher in your kingdom together. We are not doing this alone. For what we do, Jesus does to heal the hurts. And what we do with Jesus establishes his reign and peace forever. God, the parade is a good thing, for it begins to challenge that status quo. And we need to continue to shout with joy and let our shouts ring in our hearts. So bring us hope, gracious Lord, where we have allowed fear and confusion to reside. Bring us hope. Bring us healing, O Lord, where we have been wounded or where wounded, we have wounded others with our thoughts, words, and deeds. Bring us peace where we have been bombarded by anger and violence. Bring us with you into the holy city as we pray together the words your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our communion helpers, please come forward. And as they are coming forward, I just want to remind you that um, this is an open table. This is an opportunity for you to encounter the real presence of our risen Lord. And so everyone is welcome to come forward to receive these elements. We receive them by intention. You take a piece of the bread and you dip part of it into the juice. If you'd like, though, we also have individual serving, and you're welcome to grab that instead. That is so that we have our communion table completely open and inclusive to everybody to participate.
has been prepared, will you please come? seated please after the meal Jesus came out and went to the Mount of Olives as was his custom and his disciples followed him when he reached that place he said to them pray that you do not come into the time of trial then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away knelt down and prayed 
Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. It was there in the garden that Jesus was arrested and taken before the high priest. He was tried, found guilty, and sentenced to death by crucifixion. A wooden cross was strapped to his back and a crown of thorns placed on his head. And he was forced to walk the road to Calvary to be crucified. Jesus was nailed to the cross and it was raised to the sky. Yet. Even in his agony, he displayed selfless love, praying, Father, forgive them for they don't understand what they're doing. No greater love is anyone than to lay down one's life for one's friend.
Two other criminals were also crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. One of the criminals railed at Jesus saying, aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and save us. But the other one rebuked him saying, we are getting what we deserved, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last.
Well, our ushers, please come forward for our offering. Let us pray. Name above all names, you emptied yourself out completely for so many. May we do the same. May we give of ourselves and our offerings for others out of compassion and service, out of faithfulness to you, and out of a response and hope for your reign to be made perfect and realized here on earth. Where there is sorrow, bring joy. Where there is death, bring life where there is injustice. Help us have courage to change the tide. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Take a moment to pause a minute. Just bringing the word of God to life with the music. Following our service, we are going to have our Easter egg hunt for all of our kids. Um, and so I hope that many of you will stay to watch and to participate and for our families to be part of that. Um, and as I mentioned at the very beginning of our service, this is the beginning of our Holy Week, a really great time to... Uh, contemplate what it was that God has done through Jesus Christ on the cross for all of us. So I invite you to come back on Thursday evening and Friday evening, and then we'll see you next Sunday for our Easter service. Receive now this benediction. There are two parades. May we be willing to join the parade that is less grandiose, but no doubt glorious in nature and offers us great salvation. May we be ready to join Jesus' parade and go out and shout our songs of Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Amen.